Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. William Ruto was today in Kiambu County, the president's home county. And for the very first time, I saw a very brave deputy president personally, politically attacking the president and also mentioning him by name. What does that mean politically? That's what I want us to find out in this video. But before we do that, kindly listen in to William Ruto. Yes. From that short clip, it's very clear William Ruto is directly attacking the president. Something William Ruto has very, been very careful not to do. All along, William Ruto has been attacking the president, but not directly. He has been attacking the president through his foot soldiers, or he has been attacking the president through Raina Molo Odinga. But you can see today, William Ruto is mentioning the president by name. What does that mean politically? And why do I believe William Ruto is making the biggest political blunder of the century? That's what I want us to find out in this week. In case you've bumped here for the very first time, subscribe, give this video a like. From that short clip, it's very clear William Ruto is in a panic mode. And he is in a panic mode because he's seeing his chances of winning this year's presidential election becoming dim and dimmer each passing day, slim and slimmer. And he's now waking up to the reality that his opponents, and in this case, Raila Molo Odinga, might actually beat him in this year's presidential election. And that Raila is being supported by President Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta. So William Ruto is actually panicking because he's seeing he's losing this year's presidential election. And it was, it was made worse yesterday, or rather it was made worse yesterday, by also Kalonzo Musyoka throwing his weight behind Raila Molo Odinga. And you know Kalonzo, from some quarters, it was being seen that Kalonzo was the kingmaker. Hmm. Though I've likely been disagreeing with that, I've always maintained that with or without Kalonzo, to beat Uhuru, Raila combination, would still be very, very hard. But still, all the same, Kalonzo joined Azimio. So William Ruto is seeing clear signs and signals that he's going to lose this year's election. That's why William Ruto is actually panicking. Yes. So why is that a blunder? Why is attacking the president a big blunder? Let me repeat again. Our politics in Kenya is largely ethnic-based, and it will not change in this year's election. Why William Ruto is still enjoying the borrowed support years on the mountain is because Uhuru Kenyatta has never gone directly to the ground to start the campaigning William Ruto. That's why largely William Ruto is still enjoying that support. And William Ruto has been enjoying that support again because of sympathy. He was being seen to be under siege from President Uhuru Kenyatta, and he was quiet. He was not attacking the president directly. And that is something that some of my friends from the mountain have always been telling me, that you know Uhuru Kenyatta is actually attacking William Ruto, but William Ruto has been quiet. But now you are seeing Uhuru Kenyatta is actually doing his things quietly, but now William Ruto is attacking him directly. So by William Ruto attacking Uhuru directly, it means that now the political war is going to take an ethnic angle. And it, when it takes that ethnic angle, William Ruto should be rest assured that he's going to lose that war on the mountain. And I'm saying he's going to lose that war on the mountain because largely our politics still revolves around ethnic personalities. And William Ruto, in his closet, he has got a lot of skeletons on how he has dealt with the mountain people, starting with 2007. And mark you, in 2007, it is the same Uhuru Kenyatta 
who actually saved these people allegedly from the hands of William Ruto. So Uhuru Kenyatta and his men are just going to flip that card. And when that card is flipped, and then Uhuru Kenyatta's men aggressively eh, or rather propagate that, then as time goes by, we are most likely to see the good people of Mount Kenya buying to that narrative. And that will be the beginning point of William Ruto's departure or rather exit from the mountain. That is one thing I'm seeing here. And then again by William Ruto directly confronting the president, William Ruto is being seen to be lacking some respect for the president. Mm -hmm. He's being seen to be lacking some respect from the president. So even that sympathy that all along he has been enjoying, because all along it was being seen that it was the president who was the aggressor, while William Ruto and his team were just innocent, People were just there. But now that the William Ruto is now directly mentioning the president, he's now being seen to be the aggressor. Somebody who lacks respect. And that has the potential of actually making a good majority of residents of Mount Kenya actually to hate William Ruto. He's being seen to be lacking respect for their leader, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. And then again, if, we are, if largely you look at William Ruto, some of the accusations he's labeling on the president, some are also propaganda and lies. Some are also propaganda and lies. For example, he's saying the president has been branding them tanga tanga, calling them thieves and such kind, ways and such kind of things. The truth of the matter is that in 2018, there was a research done and Kenyans were asked a very simple question. Who do you think is the most corrupt Kenyan alive? And a hoping majority named William Ruto as the most corrupt politician or rather Kenyan alive. He was followed closely by Anne Waiguru. So in the mindset of Kenyans, William Ruto is being seen to be corrupt. And it's not only the president who is branding him corrupt, but also in the eyes of a majority of Kenyans, he is being seen to be corrupt. And also William Ruto himself, during some live interview, actually confirmed that Western Hotel actually sits on a public land, and William Ruto still uses that land till today. The High Court of Kenya actually has found William Ruto guilty of irregularly acquiring an IDP's land, the late John Muteshi. So all these are just indications that William Ruto might be corrupt as is, as is being alleged. So he's not the president actually branding him corrupt or muizi, but those are some things that are in the public domain. So by using such kinds of remarks, William Ruto is also being seen as a propagandist, somebody actually lying against the president because all these things are in public domain, and a good majority of Kenyans, in one way or the other, believe that they, they might be true. So also by using propaganda of the president, William Ruto is also making a very, very, a very, very big political blunder against himself on the mountain. And likely from all that, from all those political maneuvers of William Ruto on the mountain, the mere fact that he's also tagging along the likes of Musale Mudabadi and Moses Masika Wetangula, you know, those were the people who actually were part of the team that actually was denying Uru Kenyatta victory. So what the blunder they might be accusing Uru Kenyatta of doing that Uru has decided to work with people who never helped him. William Uru is equally working with people who never helped Uru Kenyatta. So it's a zero sum, a zero sum kind of a game. So William Ruto also by tagging along the likes of Musala Mudaba de Wetangula, is up, it, it only beats logic that now he cannot actually accuse the president that is now supporting those who never helped him. William Ruto is also working with those who never helped Ruru. So from where I see it, it is a blunder, a very big blunder, for William Ruto to, get, to go head on, one-on-one, -on -one with President Uru Migai Kenyatta. 
that's going to create a perception that Uhuru Kenyatta is under siege. That will now mean that his supporters will ring, ring fence him and it will generate into a tribal kind of a political war. And William Ruto will lose because our politics is largely ethnic based. And he's also creating a perception that he has no respect for the president. So that sympathy all along he has been enjoying will also dissipate. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that those are just some of the reasons that just explains why William Ruto should not actually attack the president. Because by attacking the president, he's making a very, very big political blunder. Yes. And just as I did state when we were starting, in case you've bumped here for the very first time, and so far you have not yet subscribed, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. Thank you, God bless you, God bless Kenya.